Okay, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I hope your family is safe and well and that you're, you're, you've gotten your vaccinations. <laughs> Please go ahead and share your information via chat. We want to help you introduce yourselves to each other. And uh, the point is to make connections here. Um, I'm so excited that Dr. Jody Dimmerman is joining us today. Jenner, Dinnerman, pardon me. Um, we are going to be in webinar format. And the reason why I do this, guys, is so that we can tape the show. And we do have a lot of people watch it after the fact. Um, I was just looking this morning. We've had up to 800 people watch our videos. Um, let's see here. Jody's going to be presenting information about using technology to gain efficiency and effectiveness, particularly as a one-woman show. Um, we want to provide a chance for everyone to get to know each other. So we do have a networking meeting every fourth Friday of the month. So our next meeting will be a networking meeting. And we'd ask that everybody bring a guest. The bigger this gets, the more value there is in it for you. Uh, quickly, Purse Power is working to help women use their massive purchasing power to drive positive change. We believe that women if they, who make 80% of all purchasing decisions, if we would choose to buy from the companies that actively promote women, and we would do that in mass, and we could, could create a funding stream for battered women's shelters in the process that we could shatter glass ceilings and change lives. So that's what Purse Power is all about. I'm having trouble talking this morning. Um, the purpose of the calls, obviously, are to connect you with each other, connect you with national leaders, get you some good information. And particularly for solopreneurs, I think that today's show is going to be very, very beneficial. Um, I want to shout out to Jennifer Grigsby, Jean Kelly, and Lou Kerr, who are our uh, shareholders on the call. And let's go ahead and get started. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about Jody. Please do share your comments in the chat field. Um, introduce yourselves, get to know each other. Um, ask questions by clicking on the questions link, the Q&A box, and we'll get to those about midway through the broadcast. All right, let me introduce Jody. Thank you for being here. You're very welcome, Donna. I'm happy to be here. This is this gonna is be you. fun. It sure is. It's gonna be a great program. All right, so um, Dr. Dennerman is the owner and chiropractor for Light Source in New Jersey. And um, she's also the founder and creator of the Soup School which she describes as an online finishing school for women in practice seeking automation and marketing solutions. And again, I really think this is going to be high value added, particularly for solopreneurs, coaches, et cetera. Um, I think that uh, Judy is going, Jody is going to um, help us realize true joy, a deeper, authentic expression of our full potential and have an optimized experience at work, home and play. All right, let's go ahead and start with some questions here. First of all, we want to get to know you. I'd like you to give us a little bit of your background. Sure. So I'm here in New Jersey and I have two practices and I've been doing what I do for 21 years. I'm a family wellness based chiropractor. I, I specialize in serving pregnant women and kids and um, I'm married to my best friend. We've been together for almost 30 years and I've got two kids, very busy world. And we got a puppy last week. So oh, um, <laughs> yeah, I, I graduated from Rutgers University with a degree in English when I was about, oh, I don't know, 22. I wanted to be on Broadway. That was my lifelong dream. And um, chiropractic sideswiped me and took me forever. And I haven't looked back since. How That's about that? Story. How about that? Well, yeah. you're a character. I don't know you well, but you're a character from what, I, what I've seen of you. All right. So um, tell us about Soup School and the associated technology kind of addition to your business portfolio. How did you get there? What were your key crossroads and key decisions? Sure. Yeah. So let me give you a little bit of background. If, if, when I was, um, when I was maybe 10 years in practice, I came to the realization that a large percent of my money and my time and my energy was spent on managing, hiring and firing staff. And it was exhausting to me specifically because I have a tendency to fall in love with people. And it was really difficult for me to draw the line in the sand with my staff of I'm your boss, I'm your friend, I'm your chiropractor, I'm your mentor, I'm your leader, I'm your teacher. I was all of those things. And it just got too confusing for me. It became too difficult. And I spent thousands and thousands of dollars on coaching programs and training programs to learn how to properly run a staff team. At one point I had four women working in my office at the same time and I was miserable 
because mm -hmm. I was distracted from what I was put on this planet to do, which was to adjust people so that their lives could change through chiropractic because I was busy being a boss and I didn't want to be a boss. It wasn't my thing. Mm -hmm. And I, I realized then, and at that time I was 11 years in practice that I, I'm one of the people in the world who rises up to challenges and creates change as opposed to creating the change to prepare for when the challenge happens. And I was in a place where I was being challenged and I wasn't enjoying my practice experience. And I knew that there had to be a better way of doing things. And I created the system for having my practice be just as effective and joy filled as it was, but without staff. And that meant that I was going to have to, you know, pull up my big girl trousers and really dive in to create systems for automation because so nobody was going to be there to answer the phone or take money or schedule practice members, whatever those th marketing organization, all of that stuff. It had mm -hmm. to be done in an organized way, in an automated way, because um, I was no longer going to have somebody sitting at the desk. And fast forward to today or actually spring of 2020 when the world changed overnight mm. um all of the people around me were seeing that their staff team was actually leaving or furloughing or going on on leave because they were freaked out about the situations and the 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 practitioners and the practice owners and coaches chiropractors you name it they would reach out to me and say i need automation skills and i need them yesterday because mm. my my office manager has been managing my front desk for the past 15 years and she just left she doesn't want to be around people right now so automation overnight became something that specifically women in practice were really hungry for and they needed solutions yeah. fast. So I remember sitting at my desk in Clinton, New Jersey, and it was a cold rainy day in April. And I looked around my office and I had just gotten off the phone with yet another practice owner who was asking me for advice. And I said, okay, who are the main players that make it possible for me to run a successful practice and keeping everything automated. So I made a list, I made some phone calls and I said, I'm thinking about creating a school for automation, for joy filled practices. Do you wanna come play? Because I knew that, you know, I know what I'm good at and I know what I'm not good at. I have no place teaching people about money. I have no place teaching people about um, I don't HIPAA compliance or what you're allowed to do when you're marketing on Facebook. It's not my thing. Right. Mm -hmm. But I know the person who it is their thing. And I called them up and I said, come teach in my school. And they all said, yes, they jumped in with both feet and we created what's called soup school. So soup is staffless entrepreneurial women in practice. Mm. Our students are superstars and the company itself is called staffless practice. And there's so much happening with it. I mean, overnight, it was a success. We, um, we launched our school, we immediately our floodgates opened and students came in and here we are six months later. And it's been amazing. And I think that people get that my commitment to far exceed expectations is no joke. And that's just how I've been since the beginning in my practice too. Boy, your timing is perfect, isn't it? <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. That's awesome. All right. Okay, so you grew up in an entrepreneurial family. I didn't. And yeah. I see that as a huge value add. I really do. So what were some of your key learnings as a child that enabled you to be entrepreneurial, even as a chiropractor? Yeah. So um, my grandmom was my person in the world. Her name was Marjorie Blum. And she and my um, grandpa owned... Um, fabric companies and they owned a furniture store and I would watch her um I would watch her flirt and dance in conversation with people and then go in the back office and do the hard stuff. You know, the, they used to have this old school calculator with the big buttons and the roll of tape. Oh, know? I've done that. Yeah. <laughs> I was so mesmerized by how she would be able to divide her energy between the flirtation and the dance 
and the jump into cerebral mode and get it done. And mm -hmm. um, then when I was 13 years old, my mom said to me, you're either going to um, join a sports team or get a job. And I grew up in Princeton, New Jersey. And I said, well, I hate sports, so I'm obviously going to get a job. <laughs> and I started working for the manager, if you know Princeton, of the Princeton Shopping Center. I was her flyer girl. I would go to all of the stores and she was hard. She was tough. I mm. thought at the time that she wasn't the nicest person on the planet. And now I look back and think she was one of my main teachers. And I was 13. She taught me how to be committed to the mission and the vision of a company because that's what she did. She walked that walk mm -hmm. and um, she planted a seed and it was a seed that I got hungry for as I grew. And um, my course of events in my life took me to chiropractic. And from the minute I opened, I graduated chiropractic school. I opened my own practice. I could never work for somebody else as a chiropractor. I wanted my own thing because I've got such a big vision and a big personality. And, um, you know, I haven't looked back. I've served over a hundred thousand adjustments and I've done it in my style. And here's the deal. If you own a practice, your practice is a reflection of who you are and where your shortcomings are, are where the shortcomings of the practice are, where your strengths and, um, attributes are, are the strengths and the attributes of the practice. So the cool thing is that we're on this evolving, continuously changing path as women in business, right? Mm -hmm. And we're always changing and growing. So is our practice. So is our business. I've run so many companies and businesses over the past 20 years. And I would say staffless practice and soup school, what I'm doing with it is probably the best. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. But to your point, I mean, it's particularly any solopreneur, any consultant, any coach, it is their business in them. Yep. And, right, right, exactly. Okay. So um, let's see here. What are the benefits of having a staffless or a lean enterprise? And I'd ask, what are some of the downsides? So upsides and downsides. Sure. That's a fair question. So let's start with the downsides. I always like to end with the positive. Um, I'm thinking, Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I do have a virtual assistant who rocks my world. She's really wonderful and awesome. And um, so I'm not totally staffless, but not having staff in the office, I would say every once in a blue moon, there is somebody who comes along and they want to tell me all about it, right? They want to tell me about Sally's soccer practice and Johnny's big toe and Janie's eye that keeps twitching, whatever. I'm a chiropractor, so they want to tell me about it. I used to be able to lean on somebody at the desk to have like a baseball sign, a baseball cue where I would do this or I would do this or something like that. And they would interrupt the conversation so that I didn't fall behind the schedule. But I can do that now in an automated way. I can set a timer on my phone if I know that Sally Brown is coming in and is going to want to tell me all about it. So I would say that's like the main um challenge is hmm. not having a person to have my back. So what I do is I create the system so that my back is still had, right? Uh -huh. So what I love about it is that nothing was more frustrating to me than um, my vision sits in the center, my mission and my vision sit in the center of everything I do for my practice. Uh -huh. And from the way that we answer the phone, to the way that we greet somebody when they walk in, everything is about my mission and my vision. And I would spend an hour training somebody when you answer the phone, this is what you do. This is how your voice should influx. This, this is what you don't wanna do. And then I would walk away and I would deal with a client in the back and I would hear the phone ring and I would hear the person at the desk completely ignoring what we just went through. Oh, right? boy. And yeah. I'd even have, so I guess my favorite thing about not having staff is I know that the way that my practice members or my clients are going to be handled 
it's going to be the way that I want it. It's going to be that top notch service every time. And listen, I'm not saying it's not a good idea to have staff because if you have a staff team that can follow your lead or that can lead you in finding the right solutions for your business, more power to you. It's just not my cup of tea. So I had mm. to create the solutions to get a new cup of tea, if that makes sense. Sure, sure, sure. I think we better also get a little more information about what this looks like for you. So give me an example. Walk me end to end with a customer and what are these staffless things that you do? Sure. That's fun. Yeah. Okay. So I'm sitting here having this meeting with you right now, and there's probably somebody calling my office to, I have a wait list practice. So it takes some time for somebody to get an appointment with me. They call my office. They hear a very clear directive voicemail telling them where to go next to get the help that they need. So mm -hmm. my office phone truly becomes my office manager. Okay. okay. They either go to my website or they go to my texting program. If they go to my website, my website is very clean, very clear, very punctual. It tells them exactly what answers that they're looking for. If they go to my texting program, that too is very clear, very clean, and it's all automated. It's all templates personalizing their experience, getting them the help that they need. When I'm in busy time at my office seeing clients, no admin happens. So if you're a coach, let's say, and you have the time that you're dancing with your clients, you're in your coaching session with them, that's not the time to be doing the scheduling and the money and the setting up their file, all of that stuff. That stuff all happens doing busy work time. The, the art form, right? The dance with your clients, the dance with my clients, that's when nothing else but that dance is happening. And that is so crucial for my practice. It took me years to figure that out. So when I go to the office today to adjust my people, all that will be happening is adjusting. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's it. And then mm -hmm. if I'm, if we're talking about coaching, because I do a lot of like strategy sessions with people, nothing happens except for that strategy session during that time, because there's an exchange there. If you feel that my attention is divided because my texting is happening or my phone is ringing, that's not fair to you. It's not fair to me either, because I'm not going to be in flow with you. And listen, the mastery comes with the flow. Once we discover the flow with a client. And I think that, you know, what I'm talking about, Donna, yeah. you know, um, when to interrupt and when to lean back and listen and when to ask a question and when to say, I'm really sorry that that's happening and when to be tough with them. It's a dance that you learn. The first part of that dance is you learn how each of you move your feet and how you hold each other. Yeah. The, the, intuition of that dance it just takes over and i can't be distracted with the phone ringing while that's happening i just can't mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay so do you use chat box chat bots um for example on your your uh, website where they ask a question and you've got okay no, so it completely overwhelms me <laughs> okay <laughs> so i set it up and i hated it i really hated it here are the systems that i use okay. i use my phone system in my off my I have a phone system, like it's old school. It's a phone. You pick up the phone. It's got the phone cord, right? Uh -huh. And yeah. it, the answering machine on it is the office manager. That's what directs people out. I use a texting program that's on a cloud platform so that I can access it from my phone. I can access it from any screen that I'm in front of. I use um, a CRM program that has click funnels and landing pages and email campaigns. And then of course I have my chiropractic software program, which is where I take my notes and client files and all of that HIPAA compliance stuff. Mm -hmm. Those are my programs. Okay. Okay. All right. And they all, the coolest thing is that they all show up in my school and teach all the best of the best of those programs come into my school and say, when you're using our texting platform, these are the things you want to do. These are the things that you never want to do. Here's what you say. Here's what you don't say. Here are the features that you use. Here are the features that you don't use. And we did that with every one of the programs that's used in, um, in staffless practice. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So how can we tell if having a staffless practice or some of the things that you're using is a viable alternative for us? Like, yeah. how would you know? 
if it's not working, it's not working. <laughs> okay, so, what are you doing today? Go ahead. I would say, I would say do a time study. Um, so what does that mean? When you get to, um, Ellen, I'll get to that in just a minute. Um, it, when you go to the office next, or when you have your office hours from your desk at home next, do a time study. If you're working from 12 noon until 6 p.m., what did you do from 12 to one, from one to two, from two to three? Just keep like a sheet of paper. You know, I'm a big paper person. I'm a big pen person too. I have pens everywhere. Keep a sheet of paper and a pen and just jot down. If you need to set a reminder on your phone, set a reminder every hour to just outline how you just spent the last hour. If you're spending the bulk of your time sitting at your desk, managing people and situations, you're not doing your art form. You're yeah. stuck in the details of the management. And I found myself there so much. I was being distracted um, from my want to serve from an authentic high vibration place because I was managing people and I was trying to train them and get them to squeeze into this round hole and they were square peg. And every once in a while, I found a round peg and she was such a great round peg that she went on to her next round hole, if that makes sense. <laughs> it was a part-time job with a part-time salary, right? So usually if I found the right person in the part-time position, mm -hmm. they were in some kind of a transition place in their life. Uh -huh. And it was a it was a temporary thing. So I knew that when something doesn't feel good, I just get like, I'm not comfortable in my skin and it's time for a change. I once had a coach that <laughs> she would say, Bill Maher uh, on his show, he says new rules. It's like a part of his show. So mm. he would say new rule, you know, <laughs> as soon as you feel that that system is no longer serving you and your practice and your vision and your mission for what you want to do, new rule, new rule. New rule, I no longer have staff. New rule, I no longer do this. New rule, now from now on, I'm doing this. You know, that's a really, really good point. Because I, I don't know about you, but I can hang in a place that I shouldn't be too long. It doesn't right? feel good. It, right. Especially if you're a healthy person. Like if you're taking care of body, mind, spirit, which, listen, if you're listening to this talk, mm -hmm there's a reason that you're listening to it. And there's a reason that you're listening to me. I'm a magnet for wellness. I'm a magnet for high vibration. If you're, if there's something that you're not doing or that you're doing that is less than excellent for your body, your mind, or your spirit, and it's already jumped into your brain. If you're hearing my words, you got to stop because the truth of the matter is this is the time for us to step up and be in our power as women business owners. It's our turn to be strong, right? And yeah. there's nothing, there's nothing shameful about being powerful and there's nothing shameful about being strong. Get strong in your body, get strong up here, get strong in here, whatever you need to do to go there, go there. It's really crucial right now. Absolutely. I love, I love that. I really love that. That's, that's a message we can absolutely hear right now. And guys, I will get to your questions in just a minute, if that's all right. Um, let's see here. So uh, we talked a little bit about tools and techniques. Let's go ahead and ask Jane's question here. So uh, on the customer relationship management system, a CRM, um, what do you use and how do you use it? Yep. I love that. So I, I work with a company called Attractwell. I just love them. They're a family-based company and it, that's something you can reach out to me and I can get you connected with them. There's so much out there. Here's my, my number one rule of thumb, Ellen, is keep it simple. Less is so much more. People mm -hmm. are so bombarded by information. So if you're doing like a click funnel or some kind of a lead magnet, the less you have on that page, the better, the less you have, if you're doing an email campaign as for part of your funnel, the less words, tell them something, show them something and give them something, but keep it really simple. Mm -hmm. How many times a day do you get emails that are in, obviously in an email campaign that just get deleted? You don't want yours to get deleted. You want something very sweet and easy and digestible to be included in that. Um, so I use Attractwell. There are a lot of them out there. Mm -hmm. um, 
my favorite funnels are obviously I do a whole lot of joint venture things. Like I find brilliant women. I love working with women. So brilliant mm. women like Donna. And mm. I say, how can we give to your audience and how can we give to my audience and how can we do it together? Like what's more powerful than that? And then from there, have a landing place online for it, get them to sign up, send them to a page. That's like a love page that says, I'm so excited that you're joining us and then get an email campaign going but very clean very clear very simple do not overwhelm them or they're just going to spam you they're not going to they're going to say see ya next who's next right 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 very good very good okay all right so you have some creative approaches to marketing and the click funnel thing that you're talking about and all of that i think that some of us understand what you're talking about some may not um, but talk a little bit more about your creative approaches to marketing and and, and i believe in partnering too that's what we're doing right here yep Yep. So, um, Mark, I'm actually about to do a talk for this. If you take, um, a piece of paper, I'm very visual. So I like using, take a piece of paper. If you have one at your desk and you're going to fold the paper in half, and then you're going to fold the paper in half again. So when you open up the paper, you have four quadrants, right? Mm -hmm. So the, this is the four part quadrant of a marketing plan internal procedures, external procedures, internal events, external events. Mm. Right in the middle of this is your ideal client. Who do you want to be serving? That mm -hmm. needs to be front and center. Mm -hmm. And then for that client, you're going to do internal, external procedures and events. You may be new in practice. So you, you're, you're going to be a lot heavier on the external stuff than you are the internal stuff, but have a plan for the internal stuff. Take the time to take the time to take the time. Your ideal client's going to be front and center on this. And your mission statement is going to be supporting the whole thing. If you do not have a mission statement, listen, you got to get on it. You got to know what your company core values are and your company mission statement is. That's it. That's the marketing plan. That's, it's a piece of paper, guys. It's, you don't have to go spend $10,000 on learning how to do a great marketing plan. Just get creative with it and do what you want to do. My grandma, um, she didn't do things that she didn't want to do ever. She loved the dance on the furniture floor. She loved it. She loved the calculator in the back office. That's why she did it. And if she didn't love it, she would make it very clear to you and whomever she was speaking with that she didn't love it. So that's it. That's your marketing plan. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's, a, that's a nice quick tool. That's great. Yeah. I like that tool. <laughs> okay. So, so if you got staff today and you were trying to move to a staffless enterprise, I mean, I did HR for 30 years and you've got staff in there, you've got to deal with, how do you make that transition? Yeah. So I yeah. would say, make a list of all of the things that need to be done to make your company run successfully. And then, so that's one, make the list. Two, highlight the things that you don't want to do, that you just mm -hmm. have no interest. You're not, you're not planning on getting a degree in marketing anytime soon or accounting or bookkeeping. And then find somebody who does that thing all day long. That's all they do. So bookkeeping would be an, a good example. I have no business running a, book, a QuickBooks file at all, right? <laughs> so I'm going to bring somebody in who's doing it virtually for me, who does QuickBooks all day long. They could do it in their sleep. They could do it while they're on their Peloton. They could do it while they're on a date, right? They just don't even think about it. So that's one thing that can be managed. Think about the different roles and what can be managed. I have, um, we call her my right hand gal. Her name is Marge, coincidentally, and always look for the coincidences, ladies. Um, coincidentally, my grandma was Marge. So as soon as I started staffless practice, I said, okay, I'm probably going to need some help with this. I put a feeler out there and the first person to respond to the feeler, her name was Marge. And I said, okay, I love it. <laughs> but make sure that you spend the time, check their references. You know, if you are hiring a virtual assistant or somebody to do the stuff that you don't want to do. Um, I, what was the original question? I'm sorry, I got it. Yeah, I mean, no, it was transitioning from a staffed enterprise to a stra staffless enterprise. And right. I think some of the points you're making are great. And you've yeah. also got employees in the middle here that you're trying to 
Yeah, I would say look at the things that they're doing that they don't really need to be doing or that they're not good at doing mm -hmm. and take those things away. And if you plan to keep your staff, have a sit down at what I call a knee to knee, heart to heart conversation with them and ask them what really drives them. Like what, how do they want to be spending the time that they're committing to you during the week? If they're working 20 hours a week with you and they went to school for marketing, but they're doing your QuickBooks it's a disconnect and all right. of the disconnects are going to create leaks in your business. They don't work. Right. Mm -hmm. So you'll know that it's a question that you'll know the answer to. You'll see what's not, it should feel, um, your practice in your business should feel like coming home at the end of the day and putting your favorite sweats on. It should feel comfortable. It mm. shouldn't feel like you're going against the grain in your tightest jeans possible. It <laughs> should feel like, um, it's just right. It just fits. It's not always easy. It's not always easy, right? Mm -hmm. But it fits and it's right. There's a difference there. There's a difference between wrong and there's a difference between wrong and right. And right can be uncomfortable sometimes. And part part of growing up in business, 21 years in practice here is knowing, okay, this is a right thing. And it's a growing pain. I just need to be uncomfortable for a little while. And that's mm -hmm. going to be okay. Versus mm -mm, this is not working anymore. This is not right. Yeah. It takes time to get that too. And, and, and as a former coach, you're not doing anybody any favors by playing to their weaknesses, right? Figure yeah. out what your strengths are, what their strengths are, and have them and you do that, right? And outsource yeah. anything that isn't a strength. Um, let's see here. So I've got Susan Chair is actually asking a question. Can you explain what's meant by internal and external processes and events? Can you be sure. clear about what you mean by that? Yeah, yeah that's fun. Let's go there. So, okay. Um, and in, internal means in-house stuff, stuff that you do in the office. So I'll give you an example of, an, of each. An internal procedure would be cleaning out your desk once a week or wiping down all the surfaces in your office, or it is marketing in a way because you're keeping things clean. But let's think in lieu of marketing. So an internal procedure would be to call one client a week, one client a week, and tell them that you're grateful for them, or to check on a client at the end of the day after your first time with them. That would be an internal procedure. Mm -hmm. An internal event would be, I just had an internal event in my office, even though we're in this weird time, right? I I sent a poll out to my entire practice and asked them to grade how I'm doing. That's an internal event. So it's something you do with your current client base mm -hmm. as an event to move your practice forward or your business forward. An external procedure is something you're doing outside of the office on a regular basis. So in my world, as far as marketing is concerned, it would be, um, I talk to our students a lot about creating love boxes. It's like a box with um, lots of ribbon and fun treats and your business cards wrapped in a pretty ribbon on a really cute business card stand and dropping off that love box to all of your affiliate partners. So let's say if you're a coach and you coach women who want to be great in business, you would drop off love boxes at the local banks and at, um, I don't know, the local coffee shop. And just so that you're on their mind. So that would be an external procedure. An external event would be something you do out in the community to bring practice members or clients in. So mm -hmm. it might be a dinner out. It, it's tricky now, obviously. It could be something like what Donna's doing right now is an external event, but it's also an internal event. It's feeding your current clients and your prospective clients. So mm -hmm. um, have an even balance in all of that. But again, if you're new in practice, you're going to want to focus a lot more on the external because you don't have so many internal people to work with, but always, always, always make sure the person sitting in front of you is number one. So if, if I have clients, make sure you're dotting all of your I's and crossing all of your T's, getting them the procedures and the events that they need, and then go out and get them tiger and bring in more, but never bring anything into chaos. Make sure your house is in order first. Nice. Nice. That's a great way to put it. All right. Very good. Thank you. Uh, let's see here. So I think you've got some technology tools too that you've developed, correct? Yourself? In addition I'm a bit of a techno geek. <laughs> okay. So so some of the folks online might have an idea for a technology solution, but have no technology background to get that done. I would what say do you recommend? That my, my number one piece of advice is to 
learn how to manage and work a website. So I use Weebly. It's a website platform, mm -hmm. really easy to customize and personalize. You can go to my practice page, lightsourcechiropractic.com or staffleskpractice.com. They're both Weebly sites and it takes me an hour to build a website. So I'm not leaning on the call to the call to the call to have an update on my practice so that I can send an e-blast out about it. I would say if anything is imperative, get a really good tutorial or coach to show you how to do the website in a very quick way and manage it. If you mm -hmm. have no interest in doing that at all, pay a 20 year old to do it at 18 bucks an hour and they will be happy. Right. Mm -hmm. So that that's one thing. The other thing is that, listen, Donna, I move fast in this world. I've always, I'm, I'm really? very classifiably. I'm so surprised. <laughs> you could definitely put three letters after my name. Like it, you, you name it. I fit into the box of the kids who learn differently. And I have mm -hmm. my whole life, but I'm, so I'm constantly going in a million directions, which is what makes me really good at what I do. Right. Uh -huh. So you may be, I'm married to a one person, one thing at a time kind of person. Mm -hmm. He does one thing at a time right? He's focused on this one thing. Nothing else is happening around him. He has no interest in building a website, but he leans on people like me and pays out $18 an hour to have it done in three or four hours. Does that make mm -hmm. sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I know. Fair enough. All right. So guys, be coming up with your questions, please. And add them to the Q and a box or the, the, uh, uh, yeah, you've been doing that. Thank you. Um, all right. So one of the things I was thinking you might lose in a staffless enterprise is the camaraderie or the sense of being on a team. Um, did you experience that? And what do you do about it? Um, no. <laughs> no? Okay. So, All right. Uh, you know, it, it, one of my coaches says to me, be friendly with your team, not friends with them. And mm -hmm. I, again, I, my personality, I'm an expressive I do not know how to draw that line. If I like you, I'm in love with you. That's who mm. I am. I'm like a puppy. I just want to, I want to play, 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 play. So really confusing for me to have to think about which hat to wear when I'm in the office, because I'm such, a, I'm so empathic and, um, you know, in this place of flow. So I don't miss that conflict. If I didn't have a virtual assistant, I would miss having somebody to hand off to. Absolutely. I would be drowning. I, I need that person in my life, but I've never met her in person. Um, I pay her a really affordable salary. She says yes to everything I ask her for. And she's a great communicator. So you got to figure out the things that make it work for you. And if you're, if you find that you are the person who's missing the camaraderie, then being staffless isn't for you. It's that's your sign. You need to be around people. I'm serving people all day long. So I don't need that camaraderie. I have it with my patients, if that makes sense. Sure. Sure. It does. It does. Absolutely. Okay, guys, please add your questions. Um, it's interesting because I, I find that I cross organizational boundaries outside of my company and we're all a team. I'm not saying this very clearly, but I team with people that don't have anything to do necessarily structurally with my business, but I still feel like they're a part of my team. Right. It's the way I, I get around that in terms of just having the connection. They're in it with you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. How, did, how did you find your virtual assistant? So if they're looking for folks like that, where did you go to find her? Um, local Facebook groups, uh, you know, I've had such a hard time finding staff. It, honestly, it's been one of the most difficult things about being in practice, which is why I created an entire school, um, for yeah, yeah. staffless, but I would say word of mouth, people who already know, trust and love you and know your brand. Um, it, a, an old client who has had a lot of success with you could take you so far as a team member because, you know, the hardest thing about having staff is making sure, ensuring that they get the mission of your company. Mm -hmm. If they get the mission of your company, they could pretty much screw up on anything anything's teachable, but you can't teach somebody to love who you are and what you're doing. If you've worked successfully with a client, 
chances are they really love who you are and what you do. So they're going to brand your company like a boss. They're going to go out there and put their superhero cape on. They may mess up here and there, but that stuff's teachable, right? Mm -hmm. Loving you and being committed to you is not teachable. Loving what you're doing is not teachable. And for me, that's really important. Otherwise, I don't want them to work for my company. It doesn't, it doesn't resonate with me. Sure. Sure. Absolutely. All right. Uh, let's see here. Jean Kelly is saying, in all my time on the planet, I've never heard my story. I flirted and danced my way through a fabulous high vib vibration solo entrepreneurial life. Uh, you and I popped <laughs> off the same star. You see this? My company motto, <laughs> promise a lot, deliver more. Yeah, Jean Kelly. She, 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 Mine is she, to uh, far exceed your expectations. Oh, that's amazing. And that's what we do. Like, I want, I want people leaving their dance with me saying she is just so ridiculously resourceful. What do you want people leaving their dance with you saying? Do they want you to say, that was okay. I, I've been better. I've seen better. No, I want them <laughs> to leave my practice saying that was the best chiropractic adjustment I've ever had in my life. And you know what, you guys, they do. So if they don't say that, I'm not their chiropractor. Ah, Period. If yeah. they don't say that soup school and staffless practice is second to none, it's not for them. And mm -hmm. not, not everybody is going to fit into my round hole. That's sure. <laughs> 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 oh, all good. It's, it's all good. It's all you good. Guys knew where I was We're going women here. Yeah. All right. Uh, Susan Cheris is asking, can you say more about how you work with um, attract well and what they do to help you with customer relations management? Sure. And also um, the easiest thing to do yesterday in our group staff. So on Facebook, Staffless Entrepreneurial Women in Practice, you can look that up. We did an entire interview with Attractwell showing off everything that they do. That's the easiest way to learn about them is to join our Facebook group and get that video. Um, besides that, so the way that I use, I love their program because it's HIPAA compliant and that's really important for me as a doctor. Sure. And um, basically it takes, it's, I, this is the way I describe it. It's Outlook meets, meets Gmail meets constant contact and Godspeed to all of those companies. They're all very important. But for me, I needed something that had everybody combined. Now, Attractwell would say it, that's just one of five branches because they also do landing pages and lead magnets and um, there's a to-do list feature. It's kind of like Outlook where all of the pieces are, but it brings in a website and it brings in landing pages and it brings in the email. It, it, kind, of, it kind of rocks my world. I use one account for my practice and my entire school lives in an Attractwell. It's also an online learning platform. So the whole school lives inside of an Attractwell, what they call a vault. They're the biggest thing I'll tell you, the biggest thing about Attractwell is that they're good people and they really are clear about their why. And th those are the only people that I align myself with. If if they were nasty or short with their answers or didn't really care when you double click, um, but they're good, good people. And I, I can't say enough about them. Very good. Very, very good. Well, the other thing I want to let people know is Purse Power has partnered with a firm to do some digital marketing services. And we've got some of these capabilities in our new system. So one of the things I'm, I'm coming up a learning curve, but I think that we may have some of this functionality as well. And I would love for you to take, consider what we're doing too, in addition yeah. to these other firms that you're looking at. Yeah, awesome. absolutely. Okay. Uh, we'll see your other questions guys that you want to ask. Do, do, do. Yes, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm finding that oh. my references are getting older and older. <laughs> like, how many oh. people know that reference? <laughs> <laughs> Good point. Well, it, it, just for reference, this group is probably your age. I mean, that's, that tends to be who's involved with us. Um, all right. So at the end of the day, what would you most like the people who have attended this call to have learned from you? Mm, that's a great question. Trust your gut. Take care of your body, mind, and spirit, because if you don't, it will come back to haunt you. Mm -hmm. What does that mean for me? Let's double click on that. Um, I'm an avid CrossFitter. I do CrossFit five times a week. 
I do it because it keeps me on this planet. Like it grounds me mm. Being strong in my body makes me strong in the world and find what makes you strong and run with it. It's different for everybody. Right. So yeah. for physical. So my rule with my patients is for every hour you sit on the computer, you spend 10 minutes doing cardio and that's within one day. So if you're on the computer for eight hours a day, that's 80 minutes of cardio. And there's no exceptions to that. So I just earned my 10 minutes during this hour together. So um, mm -hmm. if you don't take, we're only here for a short time, right? Yeah. And if you don't take care of your temple of your clay, it's this, that that's your number one, right? So mm -hmm. take mm -hmm. care of your body, take care of your spirit, spend time taking breaks, taking vacations, spending time with the people who make, who get you, who love you have, you know, the truth of the matter is that we're going to have a few friends in our life mm. who really get who we are, who no matter what, they're not going anywhere. Spend time with those people, give them what they need, right? Those are the people that you double click on. Those are the things that, um, that I had. And of course, I'm going to tell you to get adjusted because I'm a chiropractor. <laughs> those are the things that I have to do to be, stay right sized so that I can go be everything to everybody. Mm-hmm. I guess I find it hard. I mean, I'm working from home now and, and just being in my office and going to the, the living room or whatever, just getting enough physical activity. I'm not getting enough at all. You and I recognize to change that today, today, because yes. tomorrow's not here and yesterday's gone right today. Um, and every day you can make a plan for it. No. So I'll say to my people, like we work a lot with time maps and soup school, like organizing your time so that you can get it all done. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, put your workout on the, it's the first thing that goes on your time map and mm -hmm. everything else falls around it. Because if mm -hmm. you don't do that, everything's going to be in front of it. That's the truth of the matter. Right. Absolutely. Is. Absolutely. Is. All right. So uh, Jean's asking, what's the name of your Facebook page? And we'll also put your link in, but yeah. So I'll just throw a link in the chat if you want to field another question. Okay. All right. So, so that that's what I had. All right. So we, what we learned from you, the actions you want us to take. All right. So number one, you said put physical activity at the top of the list. Heard you say that. What are some other actions you think we really need to take? Make a list of things that are no longer serving you. Mm -hmm. Just write mm -hmm. it out what's not working for you right now in your business and then have an action plan to make it work, to make it all fit for you. Does that make sense? Yeah, it sure does. It um, sure does. Trust your gut. It's always right. You know, women, we have these powerful gut instincts. And I think that we have them because we have the ability to birth children and we need to have that gut instinct, like primally to mm. be safe in birthing and, um, you know, pr prenatal hat on. Um, so your, your instinct is never wrong. And how do you hear your instinct? You get quiet. That's one way. The other way is at the end of a really hard workout, ask yourself the question and the truth will be right there. The other way is first thing in the morning, before you look at your phone, before you open your eyes, before you roll over and kiss your partner, good morning ask yourself the question. You haven't even opened your eyes out yet. Um, what's the next right thing to do? Boom. It'll be right there. That's how you listen. So listen, yeah, yeah. listen with your heart, listen with your ears, listen with your mind. Here's the number one thing for a successful business. You ready? Yeah. Stop talking. Mm -hmm. Listen, mm -hmm. ask people what they want. Mm -hmm. Stop talking. You mm -hmm. can talk somebody, you can have people talk them into you being your service, being the solution that they've been looking for so much easier than you can talk them into it. Just yeah. close the boca and ask the questions. Let them pull the answers forward. We talk too much. Mm -hmm. I'm guilty of it too. Stop talking. Yeah. 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 Great point. Great point. It's all about them. It's all about your customer and their needs anyway. Okay. Um, all right. So I wanted to ask if you have any final words of wisdom and then I'm, uh, if there's any offers you want to make to the group, let us know. What oh, those yeah. Are. I yeah. have a fun yeah. offer. So oh, okay. final words of wisdom. Um, how you do anything is how you do everything. So mm -hmm. if you're out of integrity with something that you're doing and you'll know what it is when you hear these words, I don't know what it is. I don't know you guys yet. Um, clean it up, 
if you got someone to say I'm sorry to, clean it up. If you got something that you need to close up, clean it up. Um, then the doors will start opening because how you do anything is how you do everything. Mm. Um, the offer that we have is so Soup School is a um, it's an evergreen online finishing school of sorts for women who run their own companies for women in practice mm -hmm. and practice could be accounting or lawyering or chiropractic or dentistry, whatever coaching. Um, so we have these courses in marketing and organization and creating joy and keeping your clients happy. You name it. I've thought of it. And if I have not thought of it, you bring it to my attention. I will put it in school. Usually it's a $23.95 price tag. And for Donna's people, it's $1,900, and, which is a huge deal. I don't do this. And if you guys, um, there's a link, I think it, what was it? Soupschool.com. Yeah, I put, I put it in there. Yeah, it's, it's in the, it's in the. Just yeah. hit us up. And more importantly, connect with me if you have questions. I'll put my cell number in here. And um we'll start with a phone conversation. I love giving my time to people who are, you know, who have questions for me. Okay. All right. Very Oops, good. I did the, hold on, Donna. I okay. did my number wrong. Uh oh, <laughs> I'm getting old, man. So I'm going to put my number in 908-224-4840. That's how you can get in touch with me. 4840. Okay, perfect. And we've got your website in there and your Facebook page. Okay. Let's see here. I did find one other question. I think we've got a uh, few more minutes. Uh, let's see here. Somebody was asking about your sterilization products for healthcare. They've recently partnered with a supply company. Do you, what do you use? Do you know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm not really following the question. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. It, that's all right. Well, Suzanne, let's connect afterwards or maybe yeah. you can and uh, just call um, Dr. I don't want to do a commercial for my, the, uh, the product. Do. Fair <laughs> enough. Fair enough. Okay. All right. Very good. Um, okay. You've been amazing. I think I distracted with that question. I'm so sorry. I love I think the you're amazing too. Let me just take a minute and talk about how awesome you are. I think that your vision to helping women is so necessary right now. And I'm so grateful that you step up in the way that you do. So if you guys have not leaned into the work that Donna is putting out into the world, please double click on her links. Like just wow. She's one of those people that when you double click, she shows up like she's there and she's the real deal. So thank you for being who you are. No, oh, thank you. Thank you for your support. And, and I love this and we do have a mission and it's at the heart of everything we do. So I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. All right. Um, so thank you again for being here for special guests that have been here. We appreciate it. Uh, we'll see. We've got one more message. You can watch the messages and chat. Um, I want to let you know about our upcoming guests. Um, on the 23rd, of course, we have our networking meeting. Super important. Please bring friends. Guys, I'm giving you a chance to connect with other people across the country. Hopefully, you can find business partners. You can find customers. You can find colleagues and mentors. Um, on April 30th, we're going to have a huge meeting. Um, Katie Menard is going to be on. She is the CEO of Ally Energy. She also ran um, Pink Petro. And OG&E is, is sponsoring that program. She is amazing. She's got a million followers. She's a, a marketing guru. I think you're really going to want to be at that meeting. So April 30th, please be sure to add that to your calendar. Um, I'd like to talk through some digital marketing um, concepts and tools that we've got available to you on the 7th of May. And then I've got Tracy Chadwell with 1843 Capital coming on on May 14th. And she invests in women-owned businesses. So I would love to, for you to hear from her and what she's looking for. And maybe that'll create some opportunity for you as well. Um, please sign up for a directory listing if you haven't already done so. Um, again, we have some new uh, products on our website under services. And the thing that you can have for free, please take advantage of it, is a free snapshot report. It will look at you in cyberspace absolutely everywhere and come back and tell you how you're doing. Um, in addition to your physical front door these days, you've got to have a digital front door. And this will tell you whether or not your digital front door can be found. And it's free. Just sign up for a, snap, a snapshot report on our uh, website. Um, let's see here. So uh, please download our Google Chrome extension, put it on your Google Chrome browser. It enables you to find the companies that are in our directory as you shop online. Uh, we want you to please support women-owned and women-led companies. Of course, that's the whole point of all this. Um, please to uh, Jody's, you know, uh, commercial there for us, please like and share our social media pages. We need your support. Uh, 
um, and let your friends know about this webcast every Friday at 10 central. Okay. Any further comments from you, Jody? I just think you are, you're awesome, Donna. And thanks for the time you guys reach out to me. If you have questions, I'm here. I have time available right now to jump into a zoom if you want to. All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate I'll talk it. talk to you soon. Okay. Thanks, Donna. Thank you. Um, everybody remember purse power. We have it. Let's use it. See you next Friday. Take care. Bye-bye.